Hello everyone and welcome to another recreation programming session. So um, on the last session, we implemented an entry point for our programming language. So let me demonstrate what I mean. So you, we used to have a situation where you could just start writing the code right in the file in the top level of the file. So if you want to write something like hello world, uh, you'd have to include the standard library, std port. And uh, then you would say hello world, and that would be sufficient enough. Basically, any uh, word or anything that modifies the stack at the top level outside of the procedure is going to be executed like in the main sort of in the main function. Uh, right. So right now uh, it is not the case anymore. Right. If you try to compile this entire thing, it will tell you that, uh, for instance, strings are not allowed at the top level. And if you just have puts in here, it would say that the words are not allowed at the top level. So now you are obligated to wrap that in the main function. Uh, right. And only then this will work and you can even run that and see that it says hello world. So one thing I forgot on the previous session, I actually thought about that before I started the session, but then I forgot while implementing everything. Uh, I forgot to verify the uh, signature of the main function, right? So I forgot to verify that it doesn't accept any arguments and doesn't return any arguments. So right now you can say that this thing can accept something and maybe even return something and the compiler would be okay with that uh, signature, though you would have to handle this, um, you know, imaginary integers, which we never actually put. Uh, right. So if you try to do something like that, uh, as you can see, it will prompt you to, uh, you know, handle the data. Um, right. So it says that you haven't handled data and the, the unhandled data is like this integer. Um, though it says that there's only one unhandled integer because we expect to return an integer. So one of the integers went into the result. So if I remove the result, it will say that there's two unhandled integers. And of course, if you drop them, it will compile, uh, but it supposed to suck fault, right? Because you're basically dropping the elements on from the stack that don't exist anymore. So surprisingly, it still works. And I think it works completely accidentally. So what if I have like more things on the stack? Uh, right? What if I have five elements on the stack? And then um, it still works, surprisingly. So I'm actually quite surprised why it works. Uh, because when we call to a function, we're supposed to return. Oh, I think I know why it works. I think I think I know precisely why it works because the return address is not stored on a data stack. That is actually very interesting. So underflowing the data stack does not necessarily mean that you're gonna corrupt the return address, right? Because currently the entry main is not really an entry point. The entry point is underscore start, and then from there we call main. Right, and then uh, main returns, and then we exit with the zero code. So th that doesn't mean that we don't have to verify this entire thing, of course, right? Because um, it, it still kind of corrupts the data stack. Like it, it still kind of does. It's just like if the symptoms are not visible yet. So uh, the thing I want to implement, I want to add compile time rather at, uh, at the phase of type checking. I want to verify that the main function does not accept any arguments and does not return anything. Right. So you may think that why not just like make it like in C where you would accept the arg C as the first argument and arg V as the second argument and return integer as the, as the exit code code, right? And that would make sense in Linux. But I would argue that these things like our uh, command line arguments and exit codes are very much platform specific mechanisms, right? You see what I mean? So the command line arguments and exit codes are uh, the Linux mechanisms of, you know, um, communicating between operating system and the application, uh, right? So but some platforms may not have this kind of way of communicating, uh, right? For example, WebAssembly. In WebAssembly, uh, the notion of command line arguments and exit codes doesn't make any sense, right? And because of that, I want the entry point to be rather just like nothing. It doesn't accept anything and it doesn't return anything. And if you need command line arguments, you would use something, uh, the intrinsics called argc, which pushes the uh, number uh, at the top of the stack. I'm really sorry, I just like hit my microphone stand. I hope it was not too loud. Uh, 
Right, so you, you would use something like argc or argv, and these are sort of built-in intrinsic. Right, and on the platforms that don't have this kind of mechanism, like WebAssembly, you simply won't have these intrinsics, right? So I think it's a little bit more cross-platform way of handling this kind of stuff, uh, right? So... In case of C, it kind of made sense back in the 70s because uh, C was only working on the Unix and in Unix it does make sense, but uh, these days we're trying to, to be cross-platform. We need to compile to Windows, Unix, Linux, Mac OS, WebAssembly, the other stuff, right? And uh, yeah, so we need our programs to be cross-platform in that way. So uh, let's go ahead and implement that. Let's go ahead and implement that. So I'm gonna go into the, uh, the compiler, right? So, and let's find the function that type checks everything. Proc type uh, check program. And I think it's just called type check program. Okay. And in here, uh, we are iterating all the procedures and we just verify uh, that their bodies actually comply to the expected inputs and expected outputs. Right. Okay. Uh, after that, maybe here, we can just try to query the main function and just confirm that its ins and outs, right? So the ins and outs of the main function are empty. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. So there should be some sort of function called proc um, lookup. Let's go, let's actually Google it like this. Google it like this. Uh, proc lookup by name, All right? So this is going to be main, and this thing is supposed to return pointer. And uh, if the pointer is null, that means we don't have such procedure, so we'll have to throw some sort of exception. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this thing and check if it's not equal to, uh, to null. If it's actually equal to null, we'll have to say something. Um, so we don't really have any particular location, right? If we don't have a main function, we simply don't have the location. Uh, so I can just like say error. Um, so we already had something like that. Uh, error main, uh, I think it was somewhere in the generator. Generate, generate op. Uh, I wish I could find that. Yeah, somewhere here. And in here, we basically look that up. Yeah, main function was not provided. I think I'm gonna use this same error message as in the generator. Uh, though it kind of creates a duplicate code a little bit. So we're checking that main function exists in both type checking and generation. So maybe we should only check for that thing in the earliest phase, only in type checking. And if it doesn't exist in generation, that's sort of like an assertion, right? So if it doesn't accept, uh, exist on the generation, that means it's a compiler bug. But uh, we also have an interesting flag called unsafe which is basically disable type checking, right? So, and in the disable type checking mode, we still want to throw an error if the main function was not provided, even though there is no type checking. On the other hand, on the third hand already, right? Uh, unsafe flag was introduced long time ago when the uh, type system was actually kind of unstable, right? And there were situations when you would write the correct code, but the type system would complain about it. I didn't think we have this kind of situations anymore. So I think we can safely remove the unsafe flag. I know that sounds funny, but yeah, we can safely remove the unsafe flag. And I think this is what we should do. So my idea is that we remove the unsafe flag and we only check for the main, uh, like properly check for the main in type checking. And in the generation, we just put an assert, right? So if main does not exist at the generation step, that means the type checking step, uh, you know, a buggy or something like that. So if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna do something like unsafe and there should be some sort of a flag. Yeah, there we go. So after I remove this entire thing, it will break the code in all the places where we use this entire thing and we're gonna go there and we're gonna fix everything. It's called compiler assisted refactoring. That's what it's called. Uh, all right, let me try to compile the uh, port.porth. So I'm not gonna run it. I just wanna see what's going on. So another word unsafe. Yeah, there we go. This is what I was talking about. And to be fair, unsafe is the only... Um, is the only flag that was used in here, so it's not particularly needed anymore. Furthermore, the body of this thing was executed at least once, so we can't just remove this entire thing, we have to move this outside, uh, right, and only then 
uh, remove this entire loop. There we go. So we sort of, yeah, we get the program. And I guess after that, we have to increment it by like the size. Um, maybe we have to do it in here. Yeah, maybe that makes sense. So now we don't have that stuff anymore. Okay, next one, unsafe. Uh, and here we run type check program only if unsafe is not null, so we don't have unsafe, so we can just always type check the program. And there is a couple of places like that, I think. Here's the second place. Um, I don't remember like how many of them, of them we have in here. So unsafe, another one, at least three of them, okay. Uh, what do we have in here? Type check program. And this is because I introduced all of this stuff in here. So let me quickly uh, comment it out. Right, there we go. Mm -hmm. And it should compile. So let's actually use the Fasm. Uh, Fasm Linux x86 64. There we go. So it's a little bit faster. And uh, let's copy paste some code from the generator. Generate um, Fasm. Linux x86 main and I'm gonna just like yoink this entire code into the type check uh, program in here okay so if such thing does not exist it is not provided and in here um, we are going to do what we need to take the procedure ins, right? So uh, I'm going to do it like that. Proc ins pointer plus. And as far as I know, ins is a type stack. Uh, type stack. Let me take a look. So the type stack has what? It has the previous frame, uh, the location. Oh, it's, it's a frame. It's not the, the type stack. Okay. So in type stack, we have the top, uh, the, the frame on the top and how many frames we have. So as far as I can remember, we had a special procedure to check whether the type stack is empty. Uh, type stack, yeah, there we go. So it just like gets the top and sees whether, whether it's equal to null or not. So if this thing is not empty, uh, we can say something like this, right? So the location is gonna be the location of the procedure. So it's of Proc. Uh, do we have the location of the procedure? Yes, we do. Uh, so then I can do proc uh, location pointer plus, and I'm going to print this location. And I'm going to say something like error um, main function must not accept any arguments. Right? It puts. And then we're going to exit with non zero exit code and I want to align everything like so. Similarly, uh, proc outs pointer plus type stack uh, empty. If it's not empty, we're going to say a similar thing. Uh, functino functino must not return any data. We can align it like that. And I think that is kind of sufficient enough. Uh, so another thing, uh, let me just, just try to compile that stuff. Okay, so everything seems to be fine. So in the generator, uh, we're going to have uh, some sort of assertion in here, right? So if this thing is null, it's not particularly a user error. It's more of a compiler error. Uh, so I'm going to do something like this. Mm, assertion failed. Um, Type checking phase did uh, not check the existence uh, existence of main function. Is that how we spell existence? I'm not quite sure. So I'm sorry, I don't speak English. Existence, okay. All right, so that's cool. Mm, so this is here, assertion type check, uh, check the existence. Uh, all right, and another one. So this is the second generation. All right, so if I try to compile the entire thing, it should be fine, except it is not. Uh, and we have some stuff in here. And of course, I just forgot to print all of that stuff. Thank you so much, type checking. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. So that's precisely why I made this language statically typed, because it can catch these kind of errors. This is very cool. So now uh, I can even use that for in the compiler itself, but maybe, maybe it doesn't matter. 
Right, so after we compiled, I think I want to move the output to port and just try to recompile the compiler with itself. So the compiler seems to be able to compile itself, which is nice. So I'm going to go to hello, all right, and I'm going to try to uh, now compile hello. Mm, hello world. And it says hello world. And now if I try to accept some stuff, uh, right, it will say uh, and handle data on the... Oh, that is very interesting. So, oh, 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 this is actually very interesting. So we're checking uh, the correctness of the signature after we checked the bodies of the procedures. So first, it's going to check that we handled all of the data, right? So it's actually handled all of the data. And only then it is going to check that the main function must not accept any arguments. Okay, so very funny. Uh, proc type check a program okay so and also I forgot to put some new lines in here and in here as well so this is going to be this stuff so I suppose we have to do that before we even check any procedures right so I think it makes a lot of sense so let's actually put it in here mm -hmm. okay look good to me now I'm going to try to recompile the compiler. Hopefully that, that's going to be fine. And now I should be able to try to do that in here. Okay, so main function does not accept. And if I even if I remove drop drop, uh, right, it will still tell me that main function must not accept any arguments. Okay, that's perfect. What if it returns something? Uh, okay, must not return any data. And then if I do something like this, it works perfect. Uh, okay, so we can also try to run some tests, some unit tests to see if I didn't break anything in the compiler. So let's quickly do that. So it just like runs a bunch of unit tests. And uh, I guess that is basically it. I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, that was relatively straightforward. So some of the things are ignored, but um, I can fix that off screen. So yeah, that's basically everything that I wanted to <clears throat> sort of document in this dev log of the port development. Thanks everyone for watching. And I see you on the next session where we're going to develop some interesting features. Trust me, they're going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to them. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me for my voice. I'm losing my voice. Thanks everyone for watching. Love you. Mwah.